So it's usually multinationals and their lawyers, and then you have the parasites, which are the patent trolls, uh, mm -hmm. which are just a really a side effect or a symptom of the problem, but not, not really a... Uh, yeah, so, it will, it will, and, and what it comes down to at the end of the day is that patents that should never be approved, that are not unique ideas, that were not properly vetted, that were not properly signed, and, you know, it, it's a debate on who's more to blame here. Is it the unethical lawyer that sits there for a week and redrafts a patent application on a repackaged idea to make it look like a new one? Or is it the clerk at the patent office who reviews it but does such a poor job no, reviewing it that they don't going, catch the repackaging? I think it escalates a bit higher. So I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to find... I mean, I used to look most at Linux and then I moved on to looking at the detractors of Linux and the uh, adversaries. Uh, but if you then look at what they actually utilize in terms of laws against Linux, and obviously they work towards these laws and employ lobbyists, and then you can blame lobbyists, but if you look at the mechanisms by which they do that, uh, the, the pa patents themselves are just a mechanism of tax, and it's just basically a way of saying what you, you know, what's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine too. Uh, even if, if it's similar enough, it's mine too. I didn't do anything towards making this thing, but you know, you have to pay me money, and then you have to do the whole propaganda in school to teach children about copyrights, and you know, and Oh, this is like stealing a bike from someone if you like copy a song or something. Uh, you know, all this, all this indoctrination and programming of people, uh, has led me to having to argue with friends who are not very much into technology to explain to them what a patent system really is doing, because they're very much into this research and development and invention. I, I, and, uh, honestly, I think the thing that, uh, that explained it best, there's an editorial cartoon and there's this, uh, either like college or high school kid or something. He's going to his teacher. And he, he says, teacher, I was unable to do my homework because I wasn't sure if any of the answers I derived had been patented. Yeah, it's especially it, true. I, I, I mean, what, what I would just, just say, I think this highlights the biggest enemy or the biggest problem with, with patents themselves isn't, we can, we can argue all day and we can debate all day about uh, the rights and wrongs of the patent system, but the problem that we have is that the mainstream user, the consumer, the people who are responsible for all the, the, the purchases of these devices, really don't care about the issues. They they look at the immediate and what's available on the shops or on the shelves. They don't think about the... They would care about it if they realized how much of the price of what they're paying yeah. for that unit on the shelf has to do with all the green mail back and forth. Yeah. As I, a I result was, I, it is a mechanism of protectionism, really, and... And did you did you hear anything about the new study about the cost of patent trolls? It came from Boston University from a, a professor Besson and a couple of his colleagues. Uh, and this is the second study he's doing in a few months now. The first one was about the harms of software patents and the cost of the industry. And now the estimation of the cost of patent trolls since the nine, I think 1991 or something, uh, so the past 20 years, uh, is 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 something around uh, half a trillion dollars. And people say, "Oh, that's that's too bad for the companies." But no, this is this is us basically paying no, those no, parasites. No, no. Companies are not who they pass that immediately on to you, the consumer. That's coming yeah. out of your pocket. Yes, to, to, the, to <laughs> those who have protectionism from the patent system, those who are using the, the the patent system to say we owe them money for something. But but even so, I mean, the the users that I speak with on a daily basis, I think, are very typical of the, the standard, untech interested mainstream consumer. And they are under the impression that usually they're very oblivious of any sort of patent licensing, etc. And they're under the illusion that these devices that they're buying in the shops for two, three hundred pounds cost fifteen, twenty pounds to make, and the rest of the money goes on pure profit to the company concerned. Um, I, I don't think they would be particularly swayed either way if they found out that well, actually the companies don't make as much money as they thought, and it's a case of, I mean, we've we've had cost passed on the consumer throughout history and we're going to get it again in the future I mean even if you look at the, um, the Digital Economy Act and uh, its various facets that's going to incur a cost to the ISPs which is going well, to be Well of course it's, it's interesting that you mentioned the uh, cop so-called copyright owners and I kind of put it in scary quotes it's, these are not people who produce music remember these are just people who are used as agents and people in the middle uh, these are not people who sing these are not people who play drums or anything like that but they make a hell of a lot of money you know these people are billionaires in the states and their role is to basically put the system in place uh, extend the copyright terms all the time for no reason well, it's and, 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 and actually uh, like what you're talking about the fact that like when it comes to uh, music and video and things like that the people who own the copyrights like you say 
are not film creators. They're not musicians. They're not people who have anything whatsoever to do with creating this work. They're just the person who owns it. Yeah. There is in vaults thousands, yeah. if not millions, of pieces of art that it is a crime to let anybody see them because of copyright law. Because of the way in which some teeny tiny piece of them was licensed, which makes it now illegal to let anybody see this piece of art. Oh, I mean, to put, it in perspective, well. to put it in perspective, it would be like, oh no, I'm sorry, nobody can walk in the 16th chapel today because we haven't yet straightened out the copyright issue. Check back next century. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's a sad, sad state of affairs. I think until we remove the apathy by the mainstream consumer, I don't think things are going to change. Um, yeah. Which is really hard. Yeah. To penetrate, well, it could penetrate the minds of your friends, but, but still, that those who are aiming to the people who work really hard all day and come back to the television, the things that they see are completely different influences. And what, what I was going to add very quickly is the, 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 the amount of money that I mentioned earlier, the half a trillion dollars over the past 20 years, this is not money going towards anybody who actually invented something. So those who say, you know, well, we have to pay for people to produce, these are just for patent trolls or for non-practicing entities, uh, NPEs for short. Uh, these are, comp these are not, not even companies. They're just basically a patent firm, some somebody with pieces of paper who basically extorts other companies, putting some extra costs on the, uh, I don't know, the MP3 player and the computer and all kinds of stuff based on things that he or she didn't even invent. So. This is just this is just one component. If you put on top of this all the lawyers' fees and the, you know, if the well, no, see, the, the, that that's the thing. At the end of the day, it, when people see ambulance chasers, that they have an instant cringe. They're like ambulance chasers, ew, scummy humanity. You know, that's the general reaction. But when people see patent chasers, they're like, oh, people protecting people. But it's like these people are the same people. <laughs> It's, well, I mean, just just very briefly going back to copyright, one thing which irks me quite often is a, a group of people to blame that everybody seems to ignore, and that's the artists themselves. Now, if we take someone like Lady Gaga or Elton John or Mick Jagger, whoever, if they weren't signing up with these studios in the first place and signing up these deals which sort of tie up their material that they're creating and they release the material themselves onto the internet, they, they a, actually they they have woken up. There's legislation in the works right now in the U.S. where because the, you know basically the deal they're making is like a deal with the devil. They they can't really go mainstream without making that deal. Why that exactly, team yeah. hasn't but fully changed? But there's legislation that's being put together right now, which basically states the record label loses exclusive control of the content after X years. The the year they're proposing right now is twenty five to thirty five and but that's right. If that gets pushed through, what that means is after they pay their dues, when the artist retires, if the artist wants to, the artist has equal ownership of everything they did and can do exactly what you said. Just dump it on the internet and say, Nope, I'm gonna do homage to my fans. But we, we often hear this hard done by artists who are um, taken on by studios and um, music labels who reap massive profits from their work and take away the majority of their profits. But other people have made a very, well, made great successes on the internet by releasing their own work. We just have to go to sites like Jamendo. I, I can't give any stats for that, but if you look at sites like Bodo who do the uh, Creative Commons videos, Etc. There's been some very successful projects come as a result of that. I mean, even even back even back, um, bedroom coders. I mean, maybe not bedroom coder itself, but if you look at Minecraft, that's a very small company that's produced their own work and put it out onto the net and marketed it itself and and sold it themselves. I mean, very very successful with a quality product that they've taken the ownership and responsibility into their own hands. Um, and empower themselves. So I think people often forget that it's the artists themselves who, for whatever reason, sign up with these people and pass away their work. And it's it's very easy to say, oh, well, the poor artists are hard done by. But if that's not the case. I mean, for whatever reason, now we have the technology to produce a very good quality, professional sounding you know, studio. It's not a distribution. It's not really the yeah. creation. You could create them before. But the, the, the real risk to them, and Creative Commons is doing this to the, the, to the extent, uh, is the abundance. So when people can download a whole load of, even, even if you change the copyright terms 20 years, it means you can get music from the 80s by the 
you know, but the bucket loads, and you don't really have to depend on many of the, I mean, many of today's songs are very much based in terms of the beats, and maybe not lyrics, but they're based very much on things that existed before. Even yeah, though they they're, they're, recy- kind of, they're recycling. Yeah, yes, and they kind of obfuscate a few things, and the young generation doesn't know the difference. I mean, we can recognize, and sometimes we cannot quite put a name on it. But the fact is, loads of 